This podcast is a part of the Podmania Podcasting Network. Check out podmania.co.uk to check out more of our great podcasts, features, reviews, match ratings and previews spanning the crazy and diverse world of professional wrestling. You're listening to the Podmania Pro Wrestling Podcast, a sample of the best pro wrestling podcasts we can produce on our tiny budget. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, CastBox, and all other podcast platforms. If it's wrestling you want, check out more of our great content at podmania.co.uk. Let's do this. of the Pod Mania podcast. I'm your host, Rob Good, and I'm joined as ever by Chris O'Brien. Chris, how are you? How has your week been? Fine. Everything's fine. Um, I, people said I sounded like I was from Wales, which wasn't a, which wasn't a nice moment for me. <laughs> Every time I meet new people, man, none, Scott, Scottish is never what be. Never what we get. We say this all the time. To be fair, mate, you you I don't, don't you don't sound I Scottish. I've never told this story on here, but my friend um, took me out to the pub after class one day a few years ago to meet, and he I, I met his wife. He's like one of the older students, and I met his wife. And as a joke, before we met, he told her that because um, I I still say Scottish words, and I still sort of have. I kind of have the cadence of Scottish people when I'm talking to other Scottish people. Um, so it's just natural. I don't even think about it. But he told her that I did this to fit in. <laughs> so I, he went up to go to the bathroom. I was telling a story. I must have said I or something. I said something Scottish. And she just put a hand on my shoulder and said, Chris, you don't need to pretend around me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you, you know me, Rob. Like the closest I get to kicking off in a pub is singing "Sailor V" by Bewitched. Can but I just say we smashed that? We did smash. Garth wasn't happy. Garth was um, not happy. He might never come to Blackpool with us again. Um, it's like the one Weatherspoons that pe- that plays music. <laughs> it was the only place that was open. Yeah, it's so. It's such a weird. We- Blackpool is so weird. It's like war torn Baghdad. In January. Why the, why the fuck did the guy have Buckfast under the counter? Oh, yeah, I've forgotten about that. Why did he have that? I don't know. At least you two got to try Buckfast. Why did, why did he bring it out from underneath the counter? Like, it was contraband as well? Yeah, and, like, each, like I used my credit card. I used my card. So, like, it must be legal. No, he's 100% legal. got your card details now. <laughs> Jokes on you, fucker. I have nothing. <laughs> The one person I get with this scam, and he's got no fucking money. Like one time, a Scottish guy turns up in Blackpool. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. We, we. I'm looking forward to going again. To be perfectly honest, to doing, you know, we'll, if you do it again, I doubt we'll be going to Blackpool. Um, mostly because I don't see us wanting to go to take over, considering who's going to be on those cats. <laughs> Well, th- there is that. Um, we could just go to PCW. Oh, PC Dub, PC Dub. Yeah, I say that. We- we're in different. We're in different COVID situations right now because I'm in Scotland. It's all right. The PCW show is until the 14th of August, Chris. <laughs> you can it's... come down to mine. We'll have a jolly day, good time. What day is it on? Uh, the 14th of August. I don't that know. Mean, like... Oh no, I can't. I'm at cricket. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> oh, also if it's a weeknight, I couldn't. Cause... Oh, was it oh, a weeknight? Not... Shouldn't no, be. it's on a weekend. No, it's on a weekend. So, oh, uh... oh, oh well. Oh. Never mind. Me, you, and Garth will have to get together and do some watch alongs. Garth... I don't think Garth would be going to PCW. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. To be fair, <laughs> I don't think we could drag him to a PCW. We couldn't drag him to New Japan, like, so we aren't going to could... drag him to PCW. Like, it, would li- <laughs> it would literally just be. Like you literally mentioned PCW because I've slagged it so much in the podcast, <laughs> and this is always this has been a thing since the Young Lion days. It's it's at the moment, 
it's between PCW and the Inoki Genome Federation as the Podmania brand of choice. The Inoki, we, oh Christ, I, I, did I mention? Oh, I did mention my match. I know my next match with a wheel is an Inoki Genome match. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> I feel like that's going to take some of the mystique out of it. I also have a PCW match with a wheel. Yes, <laughs> PC dub, PC dub. Um. Anyway, we probably should get on with the wheel. Yeah. Um, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that was a bit of a random cold opening, but there we are. Um, we've got our wheel up. Uh, last week, we watched Edge versus John Cena from uh, Unforgiven 2006, and good. it was very good. I enjoyed it. it the, I think the way I described it in the podcast notes was a match you could switch your brain off to and just watch with enjoyment. It was just, so it was what- good. So what, what Rob's saying is that he can just watch it without much adjustment, adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I put something like that in the podcast description as well. Um, and then we also watched a very, very, very underrated match between Switchblade, Jay White, and Hangman Page from Strong oh, Style White. Evolved 2018. Jay White just had a really good 2018. He did have a very good 2018. Because he was so detail-orientated, as opposed to in our ways, like, less detail-orientated because people kept bitching about it. He even made his G1 Climax match against Bad Luck Farley interesting. Yeah, to be fair, he managed to make a Yujiro. But again, here's the thing. You, you, we, we rag on Yujiro, but he's not like a bad wrestler. He just doesn't try because his gimmick is his gimmick. <sighs> yeah. Yujiro has had, honestly, got decent matches. I think you're lying, but okay. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not lying. Um, I, I just I just have a wider base of ra- wrestling knowledge in some areas. Fair enough. I'm not going to contend you know more, that. You know more about me with 2020 stardom. 2021 stardom, rather. I do. I do. Um, I've done a lot of research. So I've done a lot of research. I know more about you about the first three months of the year 2000. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you I don't know if that's good or not, um, depending on I the mean, promotion. Like, to show you how weird a fucking year it is, I'm not sh- for my next video in it. It's going to be March last April because so much of March was missing, and I'm stuck between having it be Volano Three versus Atlantis, like the um, iconic um, almost torture act that ended the match, or David Arquette is world champion. I can't decide what's going to be the fun now. <laughs> it's got to be David Arquette, surely. Yeah, but also like Val- I, I, I've. I've started scripting what I'm going to say for the Volano free Atlantis match. I've never had so much to say about a match in this project. <laughs> it's so good. Um, to be honest, I know that year. T- I know that the year 2000 is obviously good in some promotions. There are some promotions where you know bangers. Oh, you, you, like, you, WWF in 2000 is great, but it's just it's got such a stigma attached to it because of how bad WCW was. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm watching like maybe just the pay per view every month. <laughs> but that's actually why it's stalled because I'm on fucking what's the pay per view in March? Is it Super Bowl? Is it no Super Bowl's February? Is it Spring Stampede? Spring Stampede. I'm on there. It'll be Spring Stampede or Slambery. It's, it's Slambery, I believe. Because spring, no, it's Spring Stampede. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's all the <laughs> same it's shade. Shit. It's shit. It's all the, whatever it's it is. All, it's all the same shade, and the shade is brown. <laughs> it's also beige. Um, yeah, anyway, we replaced the matches, obviously, that we watched last week with new matches. I picked one. Chris has picked one. Um, Chris, do you want to just give us a brief rundown of why you've chosen your match and what it is, please? Um, I picked Takeda versus Gresham from GTW Josh Barnett's Blood Spot 1 because Rob put me on the spot. <laughs> and I panicked. You know we do this. We record every Thursday. We've done this format for nearly a year. How did you not think of a different match? This has definitely been only in the past few months. We've been doing it since early November. Yeah, that's not almost a year. (laughs) You have such a weird basing. It's like closer to a year than it is a day. It's closer to a year than anything else. It's over eight months. I mean, yeah, babies have been born in that time. Exactly. Premature babies. But babies possibly, nonetheless. They're still babies, Chris. Don't be so babist. Possibly, possibly with defects, because premature. The fuck? I was Why? premature. Were you? I only, put, I only weighed three pounds. Okay, I'll fire. 
I've taken shits that weigh more than that. I mean, yeah, I've seen your shits. They are bad. Um, yeah, bad. I've but chosen... You, should, you do know there shouldn't be that much blood, right? <laughs> uh, you joke, but no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I've chosen um, an All Japan women's match, uh, partly because um, it's a huge hole in my fandom. It's something that I've wanted to watch. Um, and there are so many matches in All Japan Women that are lauded as, you know, the greatest Joshi matches ever, the greatest women matches ever. And, you know, I want to start watching some, so what better excuse than to put it on the wheel? Um, and the match I've gone for is from All Japan Women Destiny 1995, and it's the melts of five-star rated Manami, Manami Toyota versus Akira Hokuto. I apologise if I butchered Toyota's I mean, name. I don't think it's my favourite all Japan women's match, bro. I wonder what it is. What it is? It involves Hokuto, definitely, because she's my favourite. Is it Aja Kong versus Akira Hokuto? Possibly. Actually, no, you know what it is. It's Bull versus Aja in the cage. Ah, yeah. Well, you never know. If it comes up, we might put some more All Japan women on there. Depends how I feel. Anyway, Chris, shall we get on with it? Let's see what the wheel is going to vomit up today. <laughs> oh, straight away. <laughs> what the hell is going on with this wheel, Chris? It's, it never wants the, the stuff that's been in, on there for ages. It just wants... AJ Styles versus Minoru Suzuki from the G1 Climax we will 24. Never watch, we will never watch that match again. It's been on the Probably. wheel since November. It's been on there since we started this format. Manami, T- Manami Toyota versus Akira Hokuto, which is the match the wheel has picked has been on the wheel for less than half an hour. That's... I'm not complaining because... Get in. Um, but, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you never know. We might get it now, Chris. Um, just, you know, for a bit of content, what match are you really, really looking forward to? What match do you want to come up next? Honestly, I want to be ever, um, one of the other two Joshi matches on the... The... Um, we'll- I, Arisa, I, Arisa versus, um, it's, I believe it's Arisa versus Jungle we have on here. Yep, from Stardom. And Star. um, Azure versus Karu, because second best match of 2000 so far. This is from 997, you know that, right? You have picked the wrong match. <laughs> Oh, because I don't think it happened in 1997. Well, I did think that, but if it comes up, we'll find it. Oh God, the wheel has started. It's got it's bored of our bullshit. Apparently, <laughs> has a mind of its own. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! <laughs> Ric Flair versus Terry Funk, Clash of Champions, 1989. Is this the I Quit match? Yeah, fantastic. This is one of Garth's picks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm buzzing for this because this is a v- another really, really good match. And um, unless I'm very much mistaken, isn't this also melts a five star rated match? I don't have a encyclopedic knowledge of melts. <laughs> well, neither do I, or I wouldn't have asked you. Well, you keep bringing up oh, melts a five star. <laughs> You've done this before as well. Don't pretend like you don't set some store by Meltzer's ratings because you are lying to yourself, Chris. I don't. I, I, I never bring up a match that melts to yourself. I will, I will say it at some point during the fucking fact. I will not bring it up as a five star rate, a melts a five star rated match. Like, goddamn, Robert. You are lying to yourself, I'm not, Chris. I'm not, I'm not lying. I have no reason to lie. Literally, my, my wrestling takes have been. Com- I was laughing at my own fucking wrestling takes the other night on Twitter. I did see that. I did see you go back through your old notebook. Joseph Montecilio and Forrest Silver were so mad at me. Because <laughs> I gave Sonata versus fucking um, Okada from, I think, uh, would have been New Beginning, five star. No, um, four and a half stars. And I'm like, I, d- I don't stand by this take. I don't at all stand by I used to like Travis Banks. I've grown so much. I don't think you've grown so much. It's just that Travis Banks is a skis. Oh, no, he he was legitimately not very good. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what we'll do is we will queue those two matches up for you. Um, We'll be using the network for the Clash of Champions match. However, I will put the link for the um, All Japan Women's match in the podcast description so you don't have to go out searching for it. It's a daily motion link. Um, But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after the sound effects. Stay 
right there. And we're back. So what we're going to do is we are going to start with the WWE Network. We're going to start with the Clash of Champions from 1989, the I Quit match between Ric Flair and Terry Funk. And then we're going to... Say again? It's an amazing match. And then we're going to go to All Japan Women and go to Toyota versus Hokuto. Um, So if you want to fire up your WWE Network um, or your Peacock, whatever... Um, and find Clash of the Champions 9 from November the 15th, 1989. Skip ahead to 1 hour, 21 minutes and 26 seconds, or use the Jump 2 feature at the bottom. You'll see a picture of a very pink-faced Ric Flair in front of... What appears to be a firing squad's wall. Yeah, what looks like a murder scene from Dexter behind him. I've never seen Dexter. Pardon? I've never seen Dexter. Um, it's one season one, brilliant. Two, brilliant. See, um, that's my problem. That apparently, it ends really badly. Oh my god! Three is okay. Four is stellar. Five is wank. Six is great. Seven and eight are wank. That last thing, I don't, I don't want to watch a show where most of it's wank. I'd say, I'd say it's not most of it. I'd say it's three seven. Where a lot of it's wank. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what's not wank, though, Chris? What? Ric Flair versus Terry Funk in an I Quit match. I've heard in the 80s, Ric Flair didn't have much need to wank. That's true. 10,000 women, don't you know? 10,000? I didn't hear. I didn't know that. Did you know? (laughs) Apparently, apparently he's put forth that he slept with 10,000 women. Now that, his cock must be like a pepper army. (laughs) There... Have you ever seen Have you ever seen American Dad? That's not where I thought that was going. I thought you were going to say something like you've ever seen Ric Flair's penis. Um, yes, I've seen American Dad. You know the first episode where um, Steve gets an old dog? <laughs> yeah. I, I have a feeling that Ric Flair's penis looks a bit like that. <laughs> like an old, decrepit dog. Like it's on three legs. <laughs> I think Ric Flair was on three legs most of the time. There's, there's, fly, there's flies <laughs> around it. Um, right, before we make more weird allusions to Ric Flair's penis, um, Chris, are you ready? Yeah. Then let's do this. Three, two, one, play. That's actually a surprisingly nice set for 1989. I'm um, saying that like I haven't seen this match before. I love the cowboy theme. Yeah. Love Adam it. paid touches. Yeah, though I've seen a video of the exchange that him and Kenny Omega have um, at Firefest. He's improved on the mic. Ooh, hangman. Yeah. But yeah, it's all about drink. He's more confident. <laughs> it's so much better with fans. So much it's better. A- it's amazing how much people have turned around on him. Hangman could be just- like, yeah. He- because now on Twitter, I'm seeing everyone going, they better pull the trigger on Hangman. They better do it. Like, people are properly behind Hangman. Yeah, it's good, though. I keep I keep forgetting that Funk wasn't fully the face going into this. He, do, he isn't... Well, I was going to say he doesn't look like a face, but then I suppose, you know, the whole the last cowboy, cowboy thing, thing is, is yeah. inherently a face gimmick, isn't it? He's been around for fucking ages, Funk, hasn't he? Well, well, yeah, and... his, he, well, how many retirements has he had? Well, yeah, but he hadn't had any at this point, I don't think. I think it is important to note as well at the moment that he was confirmed on Twitter that um, Funk's struggling with dementia at the moment, which is just yeah, awful. awful. You know, when you think about, you know, just what a man he is, to go through that's awful. You lose yourself with dementia, it's awful. My nan had dementia, it's... Uh, it's it's mind. not an easy illness um, for anyone, um, especially those closest to them. I have bad news, Rob. Terry Funk has never appeared in the Anoka Jr. Federation. <laughs> he's appeared Do- in PWG. Pro Wrestling Gorilla? <laughs> yeah, he's wrestling in PWG Kurt Russell Reunion. <laughs> Had the LAX Hilton. What the actual fuck? He was in a Legends Battle Royal with Roddy Piper, Barry Orton, Bob Orton, Chavo Sr. 
Cool Connection 1, Danny Davis, Jimmy Hart, Mando Guerrero, Mike Graham, Rock Riddle, Savio Vega, Sean Morley, Shane Douglas, um, Shane Helms, Tatanka, <laughs> Terry from the Barbarian, the Warlord, Tito Santana, and Vampiro. Uh, that is a wheel match. It's 35 minutes. Well, well Claudio, the, the main event of that was Claudio Castagnoli versus El Generico. Chris, how the fuck is Ric Flair a face? Um, like, I'm not being funny. He's come to the ring being completely surrounded by beautiful women. Okay, yeah, fireworks. Yeah, fair. Also, look how bad look, look the uh, floor is. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, it does not look full, does it? They, apparently, that's, that's apparently do we see the biggest oh, thing. They didn't draw. Where was this? Uh, November 1989. No, I mean, like, where? Oh, okay. where? Sorry, I thought you said when. Um, yeah, we're in New York. Oh, right, in the WWF's backyard, then. Yeah. But, like, we, where, it's in the Houston Fieldhouse. There's apparently around 4,000 people there. What's the capacity? I don't fucking know. Just Hold click on. on it on Cage Match, Chris. Ethan Fieldhouse. Is there anything, did anything else happen there in 1989? That doesn't count as an I quit, by the way. Just having it on a big sign. <laughs> this is the only place it ran in... Did it run anywhere in 1998? No. Right, so... I don't know. I don't know, Robert. Fair enough. Also, Jake Roberts' retirement match happened on this PWG show. Fuck it. Wait, this is Shane Helms versus Joey Ryan. Um, Ray Baranka. Ray Baranka? What the fuck is this card? ODB was on the card. You had um, the Rock Nest Monsters versus the Cutler Brothers versus the Fighting Taylor Boys, which had Brian Cage in it. <laughs> And be young bucks. How is Jim Ross? I'm wondering Jim Ross is good at his job. Is it Jim Ross and Gordon Soley? I believe so. I I was I was about to say I thought I said it I said Excalibur for a second. I forgot I was still on the. I love the fact that Funk went to go and assault the fans and then fell over. You know what I like? There's a guy in, the Batman, with, with, in a Batman t-shirt in the front row, so, like, shit literally never changes. <laughs> I was gonna say interesting thing about the um, Gary Hart, as he said, yeah, Gordon Zoli. To be honest, this was the end of a very good year for WCW. Very good year. Like, this is probably... A, well, I'll say the last great year. The 91's meant to be okay. But like, <laughs> Funk is just a dick. Flair. Right on Flair probably has the most iconic chops. But like, you think of some of the chops you had around here. You had Tenryu around Jumbo. What I like about this. Mm -hmm. is even if you've never watched, if you know nothing else about this feud, you haven't seen the power driver through the table or anything, or like any of Funk's antics leading up to it, you know who the face and heel is within the first three minutes of the match. Like, you know who the good guy is, you know who the bad guy is. It's immediate. But also, it's not at the detriment of the rest of the match like it's not ruining the pacing but like we've managed to so, so see oh that was lovely that's lovely I, like, I, I don't know why I'm saying this like I haven't seen this match I, every time I watch this it's like Nigel versus fucking Brian every time I watch it there's just there's something, something, something yeah absolutely it's like there's different kinds of like five star classics there's stuff like this where you can like see new stuff and then there's stuff like uh, um, Joe versus Kabashi oh. where it's you're just in a, such a primal like there's no there's not many layers to that match you're going to see everything you're going to see in that match in two or three watches to be honest I think Joe versus Kabashi remains the only match since we've done this format that we've given five stars to what 
between all of us or unanimously? Because I'm sure there was one like uh, it was Zayn versus um, versus Neville. Well, like I think it's five stars, but you two don't. I think we gave it four and three quarters in the end. But Joe and Kabashi is the on yeah is where we unanimously all said five stars because it's special. Well, you wanted to give Joe versus Necro Butcher, I think, five stars as well, and I think I gave it four and three quarters. Because you, it's, it's a status thing. You don't want to have to admit. No, it was a great match. I really enjoyed it far more than I thought I was yeah. going to. Yeah, you thought you were going to despise it. <laughs> thought it was going to be gruesome for gruesome's sake, and it wasn't. Well, it was. Well, kind of. no, no, not not gratuitously. It's just, it's, just ne- it's just a case of Necro has absolutely no um, love left. I was going to say technical ability. <laughs> but. Well, while this is happening, I'm going to have a look for any hot takes about this match on Cage Match. Okay. Five people have given it a six out of ten. How long before Flair uh, Blades, Blade, do you think? Um, have you seen this match before? I've never seen this match before. Okay, I won't. I, I don't want to say, I don't want to give away anything from that. Okay, yeah, don't spoil it for me, because I'm genuinely quite interested in this match. You know what's funny? Um, so these two would rematch 11 years later in 2000. And <laughs> um, it wasn't an I quit match, it was a Texas death match. It was still shit. Oh, it was really bad, really, really bad. And um, so I was talking about it, it made the worst list on my video, and I was talking about it. And I start by saying, Why is um, Funk going, I quit, I quit, and the mic's not an I quit match? <laughs> and and no, and then my next point was I know this is a callback to their 1989 match, but then someone I'm pretty sure that comment's still on the video. Um, someone must have paused the video, went down to comment, and said, "What well, actually is a callback to their 1989 match?" And then that's literally the next thing I fucking say. <laughs> it's like literally the next sentence, and I'm like, "Come on." So beyond this, before you watch this, because I'm not sure how it's going to stack up for you, but um, what's your favourite I Quit match? Um, I, have I don't an answer, think I've actually seen a litany of them. I think... I have an answer that's not this one, because um, this one is my favourite. But like, I have an answer that's not this one that might surprise you. Is it, um, is it a John Cena one? Yes. Is it John Cena versus Batista? No. Is it John Cena versus JBL? No. Well, oh, that is a good one. That is a good one. Um, they did a lot of them in that Soul era, didn't they? Um, well, you think that's all it's like five years. John Cena versus Triple H? No. Um, who else did John Cena have an I quit match against? I think. Who do you associate John Cena with? Edge. Um, who else do you associate John Cena with? <laughs> CM Punk. Um, who does WWE <laughs> associate John Cena with? Randy Orton. Yeah, it's their best match together, the I Quit match. I've never seen it. It's really good. It's like the one time where Orton actually feels methodical and not just lazy. Wheel match? Actually... Yeah. No, it's incredible with... Because um, my favourite no DQ matches aren't like big spectacle death matches but there's definitely a place for those mm. um, they're ones that revolve around like a single prop so like Marishima Danielson or that I quit match which because mm. it basically just revolves around a pair of handcuffs yeah much like my personal life um <laughs> See, how good is fucking... He's went from badass to sniveling heel in such a second um, funk. And he doesn't... It, it seems natural. It does, yeah. And just to think, this is the same year where the Steamboat matches happened for Flair. He's, he has a good year, 1989. Mm-hmm. He's probably wrestled the year in 1989. Um, him and maybe... Um, Jumbo and Tenry. Yeah, because Masao was 1990, wasn't he? Yeah, um, he was Tiger Mask. He was Tiger Mask too at this point. I believe he, became, I believe he stopped being Tiger Mask at the end of 
What else happened in 1989? Um, there was a great tag match. Barry Windham and Flair versus Eddie Gilbert and Ricky Steamboat. That was really, really good. Um, Windham versus Luger was very good. Didn't he have um, Flair at a match against Windham? Was that this year? Um, I don't believe so. I think that was 88. Uh, um... What else did we have here? We had um, so many. We had Steamboat versus Funk, which was very good. A match very rarely gets discussed. Um, there was Eaton and the World Warriors, Stan Lane and Steve Williams versus Fatu, Jimmy Gervin, um, Michael Hayes, Samu and Terry Gordy. That was very good. Luger versus Steamboat. Flair, um, the other Flair versus Funk match, a great American bash. Um... Sting versus Muta. This is where Muta started. What? Against Sting? Against Sting, yeah. I well, didn't not know that. Not specifically against Sting. But this year. Yeah, Muta's... Because it was a WCW gimmick first. Because you can't just have a Japanese guy. <laughs> um, Dick Slater and Great Miller versus Flair and Sting was very good. I'm going through my notes on the 1989 project. Um, Why didn't that carry on? Oh, it did. I just didn't tell you about it. I finished, I finished it a few, a few months ago. Ah, nice. Not for any personal project thing, just for my own enjoyment. Just for your own enjoyment. Yeah. Pile driver. It's amazing how, like, revered Pile Driver was. But, like, it's still revered now. Like, not many, like, it, especially in mainstream companies, it's not useful. Well, I say that. It's at the point where, like, a normal Pile Driver is more... Um, harmful than like an actual power driver. Mm. So I need to. I'm checking my old Japan notes for this to see if WCW beats old Japan on attack. You can see far at the end of the day, they're two very different products. Yeah, definitely. despite their working, despite their working agreement at the time. We're not working agreement. They're just both in the NWA. I love the fact that this match isn't pretty. Like, at all. No. And it's not trying to be. They're trying no. to beat the piss out of each other. Yeah. Oh, wow. We had a lot of matches recommended. Let's have a look. Um, here's the thing. A lot, a lot of the really good stuff from Old Japan in 1989 was from the juniors, weirdly enough. You wouldn't think it. No. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. power driver on the floor. But um, Fuchi had a very good year. Um, Tiger Mask was in there. He went up against Ricky Steamboat in a match that's good, but mm. also like does not at all hold up to the... problem was also with Old Japan, so I couldn't find half of it. Like Oddly enough, Jumbo Sharuta versus Stan Hansen in one of the three matches to create Triple Crown. Couldn't find it. No, it wasn't Sharuta Hansen. It was uh, Tenru Hansen. I couldn't find there was yeah, there's three matches, isn't there? Yeah, it's um, it goes Hansen Tenru, yeah, Jumbo Hansen, um, Jumbo Tenru. I believe. Also, it's the first um, January fourth. It was the first Tokyo Dome show for New Japan in 1989. Yeah. It's a big year, 1989. Like it's a very significant year. It is. Um, I believe the IWGP title was also created. Uh, was that no, 87? That. No, it was before this. Never mind. It was, it was just for January 4th. Oh, Vader was getting big in New Japan. Was 89 where he fucked over Inoki in the in Sumo Hall? No, that was... That was before. earlier, wasn't it? Ah, I think I remember what was going to be. Yeah, it must, have been, it must have been earlier because he was the fourth champion, wasn't he, Vader? Mm-hmm. It's actually a lot of it was in 1999. If I remember rightly, it was between like the Russians. Oh yeah, I forgot they imported a load of Russians. It's such a weird thing. Wasn't there was it? one that was really good, and then the rest were um, like Russian prof. I, every Russian name I ever say stands for saying because I can't say them properly. I tell you um, what is a good resource, genuinely. Um, Chris Charlton's eggshells book. Uh, Chris Charlton's. Yeah. He's such a good historian. Oh my god, it it is captivating. Like mm-hmm. I basically read it in two sittings. It's so good. Like just going through all of the backstory to every dome show. It's so good. Yeah, so, 
Flyga Sano matches happened in 89. I thought um, that was later. No, 1989. Well, so, there was some in 1990, but it started in 1989. Like yeah. the original trilogy was 1989. It was 1989. Because uh, Liger debuted in 1989. Oh, yes. Also, you know <laughs> what match did happen in 89? Was Lola versus Tatsumi Fujinami. Which is a... <laughs> Which isn't very good. So Lola is a fucking idiot. Also, there was a match between um, Ricky Choshu and Antonio Inoki. And Antonio Inoki lost, but he took like 20 lariats. Shock of the day. It's like, if Inoki's losing, he's looking good in defeat. Well, in my research for this, um, for my stardom book, I came across the uh, Nene Takahashi Kairi Hojo match. Jesus. Like, obviously, I I knew about the Yoshiko and uh, Akjasakawa match, which uh, I've now seen, and I wish I hadn't. Um, It's on World, isn't it? It's on World. Yeah, the entire show's on World. I can't believe they kept it on World. I know. It's um, Stardom Queen Shout uh, 2015, that that one. Don't need to tell me, man. I'm not watching it. No, no, no. I don't know why I told you, to be honest. Um, But... Yeah, the Takahashi Kairi Hojo match is uncomfortable to watch. That that's literally yeah, I'm losing, but I'm beating yeah. the fucking shit out of you first. Yeah, it was ridiculous, wasn't it? Like it, we were such awful. a top culture in Stardom at the time. It's it is interesting. It's an interesting topic actually. The disparity between you know the '90s Joshi's and their proteges mm. to the idol culture that was coming through. Oh, to be fair, I don't, I don't know if culture was still a thing, like, you had, like, cute Suzuki. Yeah, and you had the, like um, crush, like, the Crush like, Girls, were they yeah, idols? I'm not, yeah, I believe, but they're not idols, but idol-like. Idol-like, yeah. Like, I don't mean funny, like, when it comes to, um, it, like, it, that shit's always been there. Like, yeah. I'm not a jokey historian, but you kind of just need eyes to see that was always there. <laughs> Yeah, I think <laughs> it was... You like, you eat Suzuki merchandise to see that I was always there. <laughs> um, Ju Suzuki got her own fucking video game. Did she? Yeah. <laughs> it was on the Mega Drive or something. Amazing. You don't... <laughs> this selling from Funk is yeah. great. <laughs> it's funny, because... Um, this is going to sound like I'm an angry old timer, oh, but you... Li- stop you li- it, Funk. You dirty, dirty man. I love like, it. You, you literally don't get stuff like this today. No, like, that this selling is, like, is magical. Like, it's not just the selling, it's so of its time. Like, it's sort of like how you wouldn't get, um, I'm trying to think of a movie way to put this. Um, you wouldn't get something as raw as Full Metal Jacket today. No. But like in a good way, because it's gonna. Be, if, a, if a movie's gonna be raw, it's not gonna be raw about being on war. war. Mm. Like this is the um, pushing the boundaries to see where you can take it. Except not quite, because they're not. They're producing something unbelievably compelling without. Um, like, like neither man is bladed. Oh my god. Yeah, no, they haven't. And to be fair, usually in a blood feud, ordinarily I would say if it's a blow off or if it's, you know, it's escalated to this point, then I'm not, you know, an advocate for blading. I'm not saying every match should have blood by any stretch of the imagination, but with a match like this, it would add to it. But with this. We've been building building enough that you don't need it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and look at Funk trying to get, like, that's actual desperation there. Yeah. Like, that's not wrestling desperation. That's it's actually so untidy. It's so <laughs> untidy. But like, not in a botchy way. It's no. It's just not clean. That selling of it's... his leg when he was selling the punches and then his leg gave way, that's <laughs> masterful. And they keep... Oh, Jesus. Ooh. And, and, it, and, he got it, and it went on his leg. It's it went on his leg, yeah. One thing leads to another, leads to another. It fucking flows like water. Now like a man with, uh... Oh, those like, laboured like, punches. Yeah, no, that's the thing. You can see that you can, if you were destroying this match in progress, you can see who's winning. 
it's all so it's all it's all obvious without being pandering. There's been no dives, there's been no chair shots. Yeah, and I don't normally like uh kind of also just like in terms of like everything in this match fitting perfectly, Terry Funk's physique is perfect for for his character. Yeah. How old would Terry Funk be at this point? Um uh, two hundred and something, I think. Yeah, it's you know, it's early days. <laughs> Let's have a look. He's quit. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Just the right amount of time in the figure four. Yeah. Um, it doesn't say... Damn it, cage match. Why can't you just give me the information I want? <laughs> Damn you, cage match, you fantastic resource. Well, it would be... The, cage, the match guide would be a fantastic resource if it wasn't full of just the weekly shit. <laughs> Like, because everything on AWTV gets recommended. 1944. One sec. Nine, I have a degree. 1989, take away. 1944. Shake um, my hand right now. I respect you, Booker Man. man. <laughs> nice. Oh, and he's For still honourable. Love that, and I'm going to pause it there. Just as flat, just as fun collapses because of his leg. It wasn't collapsed. Gary Hart attacked him. Oh, did he? Oh, I missed it. Damn it! Fucking um, old Gary Hart. Gunk would have been forty-five, and he 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 looks sixty in this match. Mm-hmm. Um, like he hasn't he... aged because he's always looked sixty. He's like Paul Heyman. <laughs> when was his first match? According to Cage Match... 60-something, I think, or 70-something. Um, career. According to Cage Match, his first match was in 1965. I knew it was the 60s. I don't he know why I doubted first match myself. For my favourite album of all time was released. It's mental, isn't it? Yeah, he, he had a first match before the Summer of Love. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, okay. Um, but that's how times measured before an act of <laughs> ESL and ASL. Right, Chris. That match. What did you think? It's perfect. Not a single move out of place. Not a single second wasted. Everything's brutal. No one had to blade. There's a reason I didn't say anything about the blade job earlier. Yeah. Like, uh, no one. Like, there's not a fault. Especially given the time, there's not a fault. Like, people forget how, like, Flair and Funk are such, became such memes in wrestling where people forget how amazing they were. And Funk was amazing. He'd be, put, he'd be putting on matches of his life in ECW. Um, we'll be trying to. Trying to put on matches. He, see, there's one thing you can say about Terry Funk is that he is one of the most selfless wrestlers to ever 100 get. He's one of the most selfless people to ever be a world champion, I should say. Because, of course, like, jobbers are, like, completely 100% selfless. Mm. But, like, for, like, someone with the prestige of Terry Funk, and then, like, you have Ric Flair, who's... If you don't like Ric Flair, especially around this bit in, like, the late 80s, early 90s, you you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> like even in even in years where he's not trying or he's not being pushed, he's still through sheer force of being Ric Flair, one of the best things on the roster. He was doing great stuff up until his first retirement. Like um, what was that thing he said to Randy Orton? You're a virgin. <laughs> you're a virgin to the business, and do you have any idea how many virgins I've made bleed? It, to this day, it is one of the best. I've ever heard. I'm sure mm. it's the go home to Taboo Tuesday, mm-hmm. but go and find it on the network. I think it's been cut from the network actually, but it's, I think it's on YouTube. Go and look at it because it is. It's it's it, not only is it what said, which is tremendous, but also like how Flair carries himself. Oh like my Flair, god! 
could, he's one of those people who could talk anyone into a building unless it's in New York, apparently. But um, <laughs> that's what, like, shit like this is what made WCW so good. Their main event scene was great. Because let me tell you, a lot of their undercards were woeful. There was a lot of tag matches on this card. I mean, like... With the exception, I think, of Brian Pillman had a match. With, Jap- with Japanese wrestling fans, Rob. <laughs> that is true, actually, yeah. Like, <laughs> the age um, of some- six-man tag. There's someone like Steve Williams who's good but never really caught on in America, really. You have, like, Lex Luger on the undercard. He needed someone special. And he did have Br- Flying Brian, but the problem is with a match like Luger versus Flying Brian, it's not going to be timeless. It's going to be very cool for the time. Mm. Age like milk kind of deal. Well, it doesn't quite age like milk, but you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get that like was, this, That was what and... I was worried about with this match. But that's the thing. With Flair stuff, it's so quintessentially Flair. One sec. Like I, I was talking about this dream thing, but just for ease, I'm going to bring up his match guide from 1989 because I can't illustrate how good a year he had. He had the four steamboat matches, one of which was on a handy cam, and I forgot it was on a handy cam so fucking fast, my head spun. Um, that tag match of Wyndham against Gilbert and Steamboat, um, his stuff with Funk, and Funk also had a mini feud with fucking Steamboat, which was really good. Um, the stuff with Muta, the stuff with. It's just a, the start of a feud of Sting. He had he dragged Luger to something watchable. Ric Flair's a fucking man. Like, if anyone tr- ever tries to have a hot take about Ric Flair as a wrestler, they don't get they don't get it. <laughs> they just don't get it. Like, it's one of those things where like there were very few wrestlers. Where, like, for example, if someone said to me, "I'm not massive on Arisa Hoshiki. I don't like." Ask the, this aspect and this aspect. I'm like, I love her, but sure. If someone comes to me and says, I don't like Ric Flair, or I don't like Hiroshi Tanahashi, or Daniel Bryan, or Bret Hart, I joke about Bret Hart to annoy Gaff, but like, if you think about Bret Hart, you're also an idiot. If you, or oh, Mitsuharu Masawa, it's one, he's one of those people where if you don't understand how good he is at wrestling, you just don't understand wrestling. It, like in musical terms, if someone doesn't at least understand what makes a Beatles special, I'd have no time for them. In movies, if you don't at least understand what Star Wars did, I don't have time for you. He's one of those people. He's a fucking. I say he's the Star Wars of um, wrestling, but quite frankly, I find the discourse around him less nauseating. But <laughs> um... yeah, so like in a to, to go back to your original question, five stars. I've, one of the easiest five stars I've I've, I've ever given to a match is my match of the year, but in nineteen eighty nine. Okay, so I'm not gonna disagree with you. I'm I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm giving it five stars as well. There's there's a reason that you know we give this match five stars. My issue was originally, and not even an issue. My concern was that your yeah, my quibble. Good word. Um, is that when you've got a match like this that is lauded? as much as this is. You know, everybody who is, you know, more than a casual wrestling fan knows about the Funk versus Flair I Quit match. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things, it's like one of the first places you'll be directed going, I want to watch the older stuff, watch this. Exactly. Now, with that being, with that coming... There's a weight on this this match's shoulders, absolutely. Massively. And I was worried that it wouldn't live up to it. I was worried that it would be, you know, Um, that that dreaded phrase, a product of its time. It's something you understand as you get more and more into it. The classics are classics for a reason. Yeah. And Jesus Christ, this really was. This, <laughs> it was so like, gonna, untidy. At some, at some point, go out your way to watch Flyers 1999. Like, but, but literally, go on Cage Match. Go to, like, it's not all of it, but go to Cage Match. Go to 1999. Sort it um, and just watch the 11 matches. We're on Cage Matches, Match Guide for Flair. Because they are all just for not like you understand wrestling a lot, like more coming out of it than you do going in. Honestly, he's it's, he's known as the dirtiest player in the game. He's known as one of the greatest in ring technicians, greatest storytellers for a reason. He's not a technical wrestler. No, that match, that match was not technical. That match was mm-hmm. dirty, messy. Well, it's nothing weird. was nice. It's from like Braha where he can settle into anyone, but you'll still be having a Ric Flair match, which is a completely, like, that's what Bret Hart does. You set, like, Bret Hart can settle anyone into a good match, but it would be a Bret Hart match. 
it's why I'm so vocal about Brian being an all-time great because he'll settle into your style as opposed to his style. Hmm. Discussion for another time. What's the next match? Oh, yes. <laughs> Something else. This is, a, this is a good episode. This is a great episode. Um, we're now moving on to Toyota versus Hoko- um, Hokuto from All Japan Hokuto, Women's. Hokuto, I've heard it both ways. <laughs> I've, I've said them both ways, I think, on this podcast, on this episode. Oh, um, everyone. <laughs> Is there any other way you can say it? Hokuto. Hokuto. Um, it, you know what it's like? You, you know Family Guy? It's like he's going in to be the pelican thing from this from the American... The Cocoa Puffs bird thing. Yes. Like, follow your nose. Follow your nose. <laughs> follow your nose. Um, yeah, this match is from All Japan Women Destiny. Um, I, again, it's a hole in my fandom. So it's something that I've wanted to watch for a while. And, you know, why not when we do this as a gimmick for this podcast? So we'll have to get that hole at some point. That's the wrong phrase. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Chris wants to fill like, my hole. Like, oh, no, seriously, so, like, get your hole means something very specific. I don't know if it's a thing down in England, but it's definitely a Scottish thing, because I was going to get your hole. Do you know what that means? No, sorry. Do, do you want to hazard a guess? I can probably hazard a guess that it's something remotely sexual. Get your hole. It basically means get slayed. Uh, yeah, I could have guessed um, that, to be fair. And <laughs> so, some American guy said it on Twitter. <laughs> I'm like, <sighs> and I'm just looking at that, and I'm like... I was talking to um, Ethan from Four Pillars of Hell at the time, and I was like, look, this means, I understand this means something to you, but this means something very specific. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's like? You know, it's, like, it's like when you talk to an American and you say rubber instead of eraser, and they're laughing. It's like, what are you laughing? <laughs> rubber. Because <laughs> rubber means condom. Yeah. No, 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 I get it. So, yeah, I, I've... I I didn't know if you were because I'm not sure you're the type to use one, but <laughs> just bareback it. Yeah, <laughs> you're <being> degenerate. <laughs> um. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, the pod the uh, match link is in the podcast description. It is a daily motion video. Um, it's about 23 minutes long. I'm hoping it's the entire match. I think it's the entire match. So let's do I, this, Chris. Let's get to the end. It looks like it'll be the, the entire match. I've Fantastic. seen this before, so like I'm not spoiling myself. Let's do this then in three. Two, one, play. As to admit, though, All Japan Women's is also a blind spot for me. Not in, like not to the extent of um, you, but it's a case of I've seen the classics. I've mm-hmm. seen the matches that everyone says you need to go out your way to watch them, but I don't know where they fit in like the timeline of the story. No. But like they're all such good matches on the on the round, but you almost don't care. No. This is a funky ass entrance theme. Sounds like fucking um, levitated by uh, Mia Khalifa. Not Mia Khalifa. That's that's a porn star. Do you mean Wiz Khalifa? Do du- du- a Leaper. It, it oh, ended du- in. <laughs> it ended in an, ah, and I'm like, yeah. Is this Hokuto? Um, no. This would be. Or is this Toyota? I guess we'll find out. Well, yeah. It's, it's married at first sight, Japan. <laughs> what a weird show that is, by the way. Oh, married at first sight? Fucking yeah. hell. Like, I don't know. I've, I've had enough awful first dates to... Yeah. Absolutely. I find it baffling that a company that regularly drew houses of four and a half thousand six thousand even nine thousand struggle to pay its wrestlers um it'd be a case of they tied all their money up in other things i find that baffling it's mad isn't it it's crazy like because you see like little mom pop shops that are barely staying open pay their people yeah like you see something like uh like most Joshi promotions right now, pay, seem to pay like from what we understand, pay people fairly well, mm. and they can barely sell out Corrigan. In fact, most don't. This isn't as good a theme. It's still quite funky. Yeah, oh yeah, shit! But... <laughs> did she miss? <laughs> I don't know the lights are out, so it doesn't matter. Oh no, she did. There we go. Oh my god. Oh yeah, they, they never 
we don't tend to start slow. Um, um, I keep um, AJW matches. So, oh look, it was over to. What if any? Um, d- just in terms of all Japan women's talent, I won't. Mm-hmm. I won't specify just all Japan women's, but all, all Japan women's talent. What do you know? Uh, obviously, I know is um, Aj Kong. Um, uh-huh. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Bull Nakano, um, Akira Hokuto. No, Hokuto. Yeah, but you'll know Hokuto from WCW, won't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Akira's from, uh, Akira Hokuto from WCW. Bull Nakano, I've seen the odd match from All Japan Women's, but not not recently. Bull Nakano is one of those people where it doesn't matter how good... Like, she's amazing in ring, but it doesn't matter how good she is because she's just so fucking cool. She is fucking cool. It, it's sort of like... Um... Ask her now. Uh, oh, Jesus. Fucking <laughs> hell, fire. Have you seen the um, gayism? Gaia is. I don't know how you say it. Gayism? Uh, yeah. Have you seen that main event? The free, the free one? The one with Mei Hoshiki, Rin Karakura, and Mia Mono. Mia Mono. Mia Mono. 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 Um, I've heard about it. Of way, now everyone's mad at us. Uh, <laughs> So good. It's um, up there with my favourite tag matches of the year. It's I I saw it on your thread and it's been added to the Podmania ratings. Fucking hell! I want to go back and watch that whole Sendai Girls versus. Uh... And we just went through that they struggled to pay their wrestlers, but like whatever they're paying these wrestlers half the time is clearly not enough. No, absolutely not. This is the Budokan, right? Um, <laughs> well, uh, no, no, this isn't Budokan. No, it's not, I think. Is it what, Sumo? What I think it might be... Oh, uh, what? Hang on. Are you going to Google uh, it? I'm not going to Google yeah. it if you're going to. Toyota versus... It's Hokuto. All Japan Women Destiny 1995. Okay, match. This is their really famous one, isn't it? Oh, no, it's a t- I forgot this would be TV, so it'll be going to... Uh, yeah, break. we'll have ad breaks. Don't go, AEW Destiny. Um, oof, what a cat. Jesus! <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Fucking stank on that. Jesus Christ alive. I'm going to have to do 1995 at some point, because that's such a fucking good year. Um, not yeah, for WWF is, and WCW, it's not. It is for Budokan. Right, there's more... To- <laughs> you, we had this argument because you were talking about how shit 995 was and I'm like everywhere literally everywhere else it's fucking like ECW starts hitting its stride um All Japan Women's All, um, All Japan Pro has its best year ever hang on let me <laughs> I'm going to the match guide fuck you did you have, did you check where this was um yes yeah, Budokan oh it is Budokan we just have a different entrance to what All Japan is. Well, actually, not really. We just have a oh more defined Because All Japan intended to send their wrestlers to the crowd. Because I was considering 95 for my next... Pro- I was in, I'm, geez, I'm currently trying to decide what year I'm going to do after we finish 2000. You've still got nine videos left of 2000, mate. Well, I say that. I'm smushing them together. Oh, we do March and April together. Mm, do March and April together, and then June and July. I think I'm gonna have the same problem. So bad together. Yeah, New Japan had a good year too. You had Flair versus uh, Muto, um, Muto Nart, like three of us in general. Dragon screw hair whip. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck like, now. Fuck you. Yeah. No regard for Hokuto's safety at all. I mean, they don't tend to do that. Um, also, you had Toyota... Like, All Japan Women were just on fire in 95. But that's the thing. That's why I wanted to watch some, because it's just spoken of in such high regard as, like, the pinnacle of Joshi. It's so... Because it's a case of... It... Oh, beautiful. <laughs> but the match is kind of just fuck. <laughs> They're just hard-hitting. I fucking love it. You can definitely find deeper shit there. But for the most part, you just saw Sitting Bear going on. Oh, my fuck. God! <laughs> I, I know what... It's like listening. an inverted brain buster! I enjoy listening to people watch Akira Hokuto properly for the first time. 
Because this is your first non WCW Hokuto match, and WCW Hokuto is not at all representative. No, no, not at all. Um, also, in '95, you had Triple H hitting best stride. You had like Mysterio versus Juventus. Triple H. Triple A. Oh, I was going to say um, he definitely didn't. WCW had good individual matches. They had the odd good match. Um, they had good pay per view matches. Yeah. If you bring up, if you bring up Johnny B. Bad, I'm gonna walk to Stoke and slap you. But um, he did. Also, he had a good match, to be fair, with Flying Brian Pillman. In all Japan, you had um, Ta- Tawe Kawada versus Kabashi Masawa. That ju- that's just my jam, man. That is just my jam. Because I've just named four of the best wrestlers of all time. Just I'm sick. four wrestlers I'm... who hit the shit out of each other. I'm so done with fucking um, with Tawe slander. Tawe's great. He's so good. Why do people slander him? The man's a god. His choke slam is outstanding. Yeah, like how do you make a choke slam cool? <laughs> like it's so weird because like honestly, Tawe's as good as a Kawada or a Kabashi or a Masawa. He was just never put on top the same. No, it's ridiculous. Like and people saying, "Oh, you should." Like, I've literally seen people go, "You should replace Tawe with Akiyama." I'm like, he wasn't there, man. Akiyama came, up. Akiyama came on like the tail end of the King's Road stuff when everyone was broken down because they wouldn't let them slow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, just... I, lo- I do. That's one thing I love about old Japan women. You, they see, you see, like, can try things and they're just like, what? No, why? You're going to slide through my legs while I'm just going to stop and stamp on I'm, you. Fucking I'm, great. I'm stomach. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Jesus. Imagine if that had been the finish. <laughs> it's just a roll up. Um, a lot of old Japan women in the 95. Um, one that is um, Nakano versus Inoue. Ah, Kyoko um, Inoue. Of course, the Azure versus Toyota stuff. Yeah. It's weird because it's a running joke. Oh, but like, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Half the moves you'll see in the like, WCW Cruiserweight division, you can see originate in AJW. Like, the amount of times I've said something about a move on a podcast and Bell Kid just come to me. Like a day later, and run. Well, actually, it was this. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, you wrestling historian! You know what's mad though? Um, AJW was still good. Oh my bl- god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that was gonna be, but fucking hell! I, again, I'm loving you watching, uh, just listening to you watch these two properly for the first time. Mate, fuck stardom. Let's do an all Japan women's podcast. I mean, it's probably gonna be. <laughs> Fucking hell, they're stank of that. Um, yeah, because honestly, Stardom isn't even my favourite Joshi promotion right now. <laughs> I'm a Sendai Girls guy now. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Jesus. see Poison Rana. Fucking Poison Rana in 1995. I mean, can you call that Poison Rana? I mean. It was Proto Poison Rana. Yeah. It, it was. In the same, like, oh. in the same way that Proto Punk is almost nothing like punk. <laughs> Yeah, there's a distinct difference between the two. Yeah, Proto Punk is ba- oh, going for the Northern Light Bomb, one of my favorite oh, moves. Oh, beautiful! Oh, so natural. I love. I like the what's it as well. I like the cradle that she's done there as well. Like you don't Crunch. see that at all. You just see people carrying on with the bridge. Crunch in the cradle and the silver spoon. What else happened? What's that song? Then, you know, little ball cray, but man on the moon. When you ca- you've never heard that before. No, I have. What is it? Um, Cats in the Cradle. Oh, that was going to be the Japanese Cyclone or the oh, Queen. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this could be a podcast in itself, just making you watch. Just reactions, yeah? Just fuck. Yeah. Wow, wow, <laughs> shit. A, I've seen this before. B, I've seen like a fair bit of AJW in my time, so I'm just sort of... I'm completely desensitized. I might just put more old Japan women on the wheel. Oh, Jesus, lovely. One, two. Oh, Look, we can, what a bridge. We can pretend that we love the, minu- um, the, minutity, the minutities of wrestling all we want. The minutia. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, this is all we want. Just, I just want people to hit each other hard. Yeah, that's all I want. That's, Wait, as part of this WCW pro- project, did you see any of their um, crossovers with um, New Japan? New Japan, yes. Uh, did you see New Japan's Tokyo Dome show about you? 
Um, in 1995 or 1996? Um, 95. I didn't see it in 95, no. <laughs> Mate. Antonio Inoki versus Sting in a BVD martial arts tournament final match. What the fucking hell? Oh, I was genuinely scared that I was going to be the Northern Lights So did I. I was like, oh my God. Um, but also Hase and Muto versus the Steiners. Oh my God. Chris, Queen's Landing. <laughs> and I'm going to call it that on purpose. Just for anyone who... Could... I know you, it's not called the Queen's Landing. What? Half in Manami Fiosa match, and you're already making the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not called that. This is, like, I just know it's going to oh, hurt. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Eating <laughs> shit on the canvas. I'm always doing that shit. Oh, here we go, Queen Van. <laughs> <laughs> Queen's landing. Victory roll! One, two! Queen's victory roll. <laughs> Queen's victory roll. <laughs> Is she doing the Queen's Landing? Oh, fucking up. Is she doing the um, JTO in uh, NXT UK? Pre- What's she called now? Uh, Blair Davenport. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. She fought Laura Di Matteo in the first match. And I th- Laura Di Matteo's in NXT UK? Uh, Is that she, she was. Left? Um, yeah, Giselle Shaw. And She's Zoe Lucas. Been... It'll be those two forever. Janelle Shaw is fucking Canadian. <laughs> Walter's not British. I know, but like... Walter's but like, a fucking champion. I, so you're telling me the last woman in Brit Res is... Canadian. Canadian. No Zoe Lucas, yeah. mate. Fucking hell, Cesaro and Seth Rollins had another match and people apparently loved it. They love all their matches, but they've all kind of just been fine. SummerSlam sounds like it's going to be a fucking stacked card. Um, isn't John Cena? Oh, why would you cut? Oh, like, oh, right. oh no! Oh. It's it three tapes, so we're One, fine. Two. <laughs> oh, what a kick out! What a kick oh, out! They drop back the transfer Dennis feud. I'm looking at NXT UK on cage match right now. You can't tell. Uh, Mark ha- Mark Andrews versus Lewis Holloway. Oh, he's from a pretty, not a pretty reckless. Uh, what have we called? Hang on. Um, pretty deadly, but pretty deadliest. Like really, like they're the kind of tag team that Garth would love. Garth yeah. would adore them. They're like proper old school rocker style heels. Uh, yeah. Chris, a table. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to put this out there. That doesn't look like the weak-ass tables that we get nowadays. Um, that looks like a real-ass table. Chris, I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> it's okay, bro. I'll hold you. Please. Whisper in my ear that it's going to be all right. Hold me closer. To me. <laughs> oh, gee, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, how could so? Are you okay? I and honestly, Toyota <laughs> probably got hurt more there. <laughs> actually, the body is different. Oh, it's Jesus. just different kinds of trauma on the ribs at that point. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Please, lads, put the table back. Fucking hell. <laughs> I'm sure the commentators need somewhere to put their notes. Yeah, I was just going to say, where else are we going to put my notes? Oh. oh, she's missed it as well. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I'd always think, why did people never move out of the way for outside dives? And it invent- like, as I got older, it made sense. And now I'm like, oh, mate. Doesn't this just put Shuri versus Utami in perspective? No, because it's still a fantastic it's match. Fantastic. I'm just loving when this. People call it, when people were calling it, like, brutal, I'm sort of like, eh. It, it, it was brutal just in a... You know, in a far safer way than we don't give a shit about our own safety. Yeah, but you know, if it would have been... it's too, it's two completely contrasting yeah. styles for me. I, I don't care about wrestlers. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that. I'm, Hit her again. I'm a Walter fan, so I don't really care. About that. That's true. You just care about the chops, don't you? You just care about the bruising. Walter versus Dragonoff is being ran back soon, isn't it? Uh, yes, I believe so. Well, that should be good. People keep telling me it. Oh my god, the table again. Ooh. Maybe it'll break this time. <laughs> <laughs> You're adorable, Rob. 
gonna break. Oh my god. Fun. You know what, Rob? I'm not sure what I think about Copperberg Fruit Lager. I mean, I'm going to oh. pretend to like it because I have two of them. But um, one of them's for tomorrow. What flavor? What flavor? Copperberg is it? It's a lager. And it's lemon lime. So it's lemon lime, right? Okay. It's okay. So it's basically it's basically a lager shandy with some lime in it. Yeah. That's what it tastes like. Is mm. it? It's a bit like a. It's what's weird. It's like it's a normal beer. It's like five percent, but it tastes like a weak ass shandy. <laughs> you see, you know, if like alcohol that tastes like juice is your thing. Right, Chris, I'm going to stop you there just because we're getting third time lucky. <laughs> Powerbot, no. <laughs> Do you like the running theme? <laughs> oh my I, god. You know what I love there? Hokuto just stepping right back in the ring. Yep. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. Fourth time. I am the table. Break. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. Gotta admire the resilience. <laughs> oh no. No, you haven't. Uh, if, if, you, if this is breaking you, Rob, I have some bad news. Oh, no, this is great. I love this match. It's five stars. It hasn't even fucking finished yet. Uh, calm down. Calm down. Oh, okay. So Walter vs. Dragunov is happening on the 22nd. Yeah, because why would you save it for a takeover? I don't obviously. think we're going to do a UK takeover until there's proper crowd back, Rob, and we don't know when that's going to be, so... Maybe we're going to make it... August. Oh, oh, they're having a takeover in August. No, no, no. But all football stadiums are full capacity from the start of the season, and that's I August. Watch, I saw some of the Euros, Rob. They looked like they were full capacity already. Well, Hungary was. <laughs> I despise the English. Thanks, man. <laughs> I mean, it, love it you helps. Too. I mean it with absolutely no love. No, that's cool, man. <laughs> Fuck the English. I love the fact that neither woman has moved because they are just in that much fucking pain. I think that's a shoot. Yeah, oh god, yeah. I I fully believe that Toyota is broken mm-hmm. in half. I don't for a second believe that Hokuto is okay right now. No. You know what I love about... They're holding each other's hair because they're just like, I need well, I a minute. Like... For fuck's sake, give what me a minute. What I do like about Hokuto is that she's probably one of the most beautiful love stories in all of um, Pura. Here in Sasuke. Um, Sasaki. Uh, Sasaki, sorry, not Sasaki. Two very different wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, very different. Oh. Oh, fuck no. Oh, no, no nice bomb. And she can't do anything. Because she's fucked. Just created a bit of distance. Fucking hell. Keep it down. Here with the Queen's Landing. You, you better really fucking help Belkid. You didn't watch. <laughs> I don't think Valkage is listening to this. Yeah, I think he's he's a, he's only interested in um, the Stardom Cast and my Chris. YouTube channel. Chris, she's talk, she's signalling for it. The Japanese Ocean Cyclone Suplex, better known as the Queen's Landing, but she's not doing it. Nor the Northern Lights Bob. Oh, that's nice. Someone mentioned me as a creator. One, two, three. I almost just believe it's over. Not in a <laughs> not because the match was bad. But just for her own safety. Yeah. Fucking hell. That match went like 15 minutes or so. That is mental. That is absolutely mental. Oh, AJW, Robert, what do you think? Right, I'm going to pause it there. Um, AJW, I love it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's literally all Japan women. It's literally just strong style with women. That, that's literally the only uh, difference. Don't say strong style with too much discourse around what strong style actually is. Oh, be it. <laughs> um, not you, just... They know what I mean, for fuck's sake. Um, I, lo- I loved it. I mean, I loved the sheer brutality, the sheer just complete disregard for their own body. They were using their body as a weapon. If I get hurt, yeah. so what? It's as what long Sabu, as she hurts as well. It's what Sabu goes for. Yeah, it's what Sabu goes for, but just with infinitely more botches. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for God's sake, we had a table that just it wouldn't break four times. I am, we had that table I spot. I am the table. 
to beat the table. You must become the table. Um, and it didn't take away from the match. If anything, it added to it because it showed the legitimacy of how hard these women were going at each other. I loved it. I loved every moment of it. 15 minutes flew by, Chris. Yeah, it was good. It was really fun. Loved it. Um, but I just loved it. It just fucked. <laughs> like, there's nothing deeper here. And like it probably is, no. but like for the most part, it's just fucks. For two noobs watching this in a bubble, it just it, it slaps. It slaps. There's you know you've got two women beating seven shades of shit I, out of each got, other, beating the absolute I've, purple Jimmy out I've of each other. Before. It's just straight up fun. I it is. It, I've had such fun watching I don't that. Think it's perfect, mind you. I do think the, te- the constant need to break the tables kind of created some pacing issues, but it's still very, very good. And that brings us to this point, Chris. Why are you giving um, it? Between four and a half, four and three quarters. Mm. I'm getting five. Mm. I'm, I'm throwing out... I'm thwacking my dick on the table and I say thwacking I mean it's it's more like placing gingerly I'll go on a four and a half and we'll have to go four and three quarters are you doing that just so it averages out (laughs) democracy that's how we do things here on Podmania Um, no loved it I'd happily watch more all Japan women's wrestling and hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some more on the wheel we've both got a choice to put on uh, for next week haven't we so we'll uh, we'll definitely get that sorted Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is all that we've got time for on this week's edition of the Podmania podcast. Please make sure you subscribe uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star review and a comment if you think we've deserved it. Helps us to go up the podcast charts, helps us be exposed to more people. Um, if you think more people need to listen to us, which is doubtful. Um, you can go and check out the website, www.podmania.co.uk, for all our archived podcast episodes, stuff from the Stardom cast, uh, Podmania Underground, our watch along of all the Lucha Underground episodes, as well as match rev- re- blah, 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 match ratings, show reviews, all that good stuff. Um, you can find us on Twitter at, at Podmania Podcasts. Uh, you can talk to me on Twitter at, at Real Rob Goodwin. Chris, where can they find right, you? Chris Los Pura. And until next time, same time, same place, we shall see you again soon. You've been listening to the Podmania Pro Wrestling Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Podmania, Facebook at Podmania Podcasts, and YouTube and Instagram at Real Podmania. And check out the website podmania.co.uk. Until next time, wrestling fans...